Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today, we're going to do some router work on this Marlon Brando from the movie The Godfather. And the idea is to route out all the black sections that you can see here, leaving the face and his shirt and his little rose in the bottom right hand corner. We'll lower it all down literally about three millimeters. Normally, you would put paint in afterwards and give it a nice sanding down. We're just going to pop in some black resin and let it flow around round and see what kind of effect we get the actual template itself is as you see it but the overall size will be 14 inches by 18 inches so we're going to route it out and leave a nice framework all the way around as always for me we've printed our template off we've got it in position we've used some nice bit of painters tape just to keep it right and we'll literally pop carbon paper or graphite paper underneath and draw around it it takes a matter of minutes just to draw around that i like to use a pen personally it just stands out better than using the pencil that way we can use this template over and over again so we'll draw around it we took our time looked at the wood remember uh, sorry we've got three nasty knots here if that had been spun round that would have ended up in his face so look at your wood first if you have to rotate your template round, then literally just rotate it round. I do apologise for the lighting, it's just not evident today. I do all my little videos from my mobile phone, so what you see is what you get. We'll definitely have better lighting when it gets towards the end proje project. Get yourself a pencil, shade in all the areas that we want to remove round here. You'll get called away, come back and start routing out these sections here. Well, that's his shirt collar gone for a start. So it's worth spending another two or three minutes just to shade in all the bits we want. Now, for cutting out purposes, I like to use CNC bits. They come in different degrees, 20s, 30s, 10s, 15s. I'm going to use a 15 degree, and that's basically just the tip on the end there. Will it focus? Maybe not. Anyway, we can more or less gather from that, can't we? However, these do come with a 3.175 millimeter shaft on them, or shank, one eighth, I believe. So you want to need an adapter reducer, call it a 6.35 millimeter, and it's basically just a little tube like that with splits in it, and you will just slide your CNC bit into the end of there. That's now got a 6.35 or quarter inch shaft on it. So that will fit a quarter inch router, no problem whatsoever. Now there's different bits out there, profile bits, liner bits. They come with a bigger price tag. But for my projects, and for someone that's just starting out, you won't go wrong with the little CNC bits like so. Now the idea is to do all the lines around everything that we see a line with the CNC bit. Now when I, route, when I do my lines, I like to line uh, route out up to the line. Never look at your line and just literally just go around it because you've got something small like this little section here. By the time you've gone down that line there and that line there, you would have narrowed that bit in the centre slightly. So always route up to the right hand side of that one and to the left of that one. So basically, once we've done all our lines, we should just to say still be able to see the pencil lines. So everything with that, and remember we have this frame to do as well. We'll talk about that nearer the time as to how we're going to do that, keeping it nice and straight. So we've done all our lines, remember, with the CNC bits. Then I like to use end milling bits, pack of 10. These are all eBay or Amazon, nothing special. They do come with these little coloured coding things on now for some reason. You can also purchase them without those on. So don't think you need to find the ones with those on. We can get one a nice size that we know is going to fit in. Our smaller areas around here, same kind of shaft, 3.175 millimeter, and that would just swap that over, push it up to your little barrier, pop it in, and we set it to the same depth, and then we start clearing out all these areas. Now I've been known to do projects this size with that one little bit for clearing out with, and it's a slow, slow process. So we'll see how we go, and if it's not coming out as quick as we like, or as nice. I use these straight flush bits. Now these come with a quarter inch shaft, so no adapter for those, they'll just fit your router like that. That's too big and chunky. They're quite aggressive. If you come up to these small areas, 
with this big one that will snap that section off no problem whatsoever so we want to come down a little bit in size and i think a double bladed one like so can we get it in there no we're not having it today are we not to worry you get the general idea when you see close up to when we're routing out we'll pop that on later on in the video to remove all the outer sections afterwards so they're straight flush bits i will put links at the end of the video for any of these little bits and they're ideal for starting out with the wood itself like i say it's 14 inches by 18 and it's recycled pine this would have started life as a wardrobe originally before i before i got older it and it's free wood always use free wood and it's recycled wood so you can't go wrong at that spend 10 minutes 20 minutes sanding it down shaping the edges off and it's nice and good to go right for depth wise i made myself a little gauge like this just in case I put a couple of slits in i use the number the number two one which is i know is three millimeters that one's slightly deeper at four so we set that to our gauge on the router you can buy depth gauges if you wanted to so we'll pop this in to our adapter colic like so pop that into the router and then we'll start doing our lines right hopefully you can see from that we've gone all the way around the lines with our cnc bit and towards the airline at the top we gently just nibble those away like so now before we start removing the background to this project we just want to route out the framework whilst we have the cnc bit in and set at the same depth as the rest of it now when it comes to doing straight lines you have a couple of options my old black and decker dn66 they don't even make these anymore by the way but i'm on my seventh machine i just love it and i can go out and get a dewalt makita whatever but i'm quite happy with my little black and decker it certainly does a job for me now i just come with what they call a micro adjuster i can just show you this quickly I've got about 10 of these and I've never used them. I think this one's fallen apart, but I managed to find it at the back of the shed. Now these micro adjusters, they will simply just slot onto your router, down the two little slots down there, so it slides up there, basically like so. Then you would set your router bit into the section that you want, and you could slide that up with your router like so. And obviously, you'll actually get a nice straight line running up and running back i've used it once it's just not my my thing it doesn't work for me another option in regards to straight lines is to make yourself a little guide and it's just simply a piece of wood like so you can put that there set your router with the bit in that corner put your piece of wood on and basically just 
clamp it together at that end then bring your router to this corner and put a little clip on that end as well to show you quickly obviously we're not going to use this today so you would clamp that on there clamp that on there and that's give you a nice run and to run on a nice guide and hopefully put your router bit into this corner and you can run along that piece of wood like so take it off do the two top and bottom shall i say and the other side exactly the same for me personally i'm just going to do it freehand it's not a case of showing off and just you can do straight lines with a router i'm sure we can all do it it's just i'm not personally bothered if it's not a perfect line sometimes it just adds to character if it's not made like it looks from a machine or some description so i'll just freehand this but if you're not comfortable and you're new just get a nice straight piece of wood and make yourself a guide right we'll cut out this framework quickly and then when we come back we'll pop on the end milling bits and start removing the rest of this wood So our frame all routed out remember we're going to go around this with a little sanding drum or an engraving bit on a dremel just to basically tidy up but we've got all our lines here more or less straight enough for what we need you'll also notice that i removed the corners on each one this is because when we come in with the larger straight bit we're obviously not going to get into that corner to make it square so we remove the corners and when we come in with this bigger section bigger piece we'll just come up to that bit they've nibbled out and go across here and hopefully we've got a near enough sharper corner so everything's all done with the cnc bit that's it finished next stage is to remove it from the adapter collet 6.35 millimeter remember and literally just gonna replace it with one of these end milling bits ebay and amazon for me pick one that's a nice size and you simply just slot it back into the adapter like so we can set it to one of these depths which we know is three millimeters and we're just going to start clearing out all the smaller areas this will soon remove this no problem and obviously because we've already separated the wood from the side of the nose here with the shaded area as we come off come up should i say that will pop off nicely without doing any damage that's the reason why we go around with the cnc bits first or profile bits or liner bits i have used these just on a project itself and it's fine but when you come into these corner sections you won't really notice on the video but we've got a point like this as i come in with the router with the cnc bit i start raising the router out of the wood and as you raise it up lift it out you can come to a nice point and the same on this side as you head towards that corner lift it up slightly and as you come up you get a nice point on it obviously with one of the end milling bits you're just not going to get that point because it's totally round so you you're not going to get right in there it's too big just little tips that you pick up as you go along anyway we'll pop that in the router set it to that depth and start clearing this one out once we've gone around the face and the detail section we'll pop on one of the bigger boys straight flush bit and remove all the rest
Right, that's it for our end milling bits. You can see we've gone all the way around that face here. The good thing about the end milling bits is they basically route out the side walls and leave a nice smooth finish at the same time. Not that that really matters on this occasion. Remember, we are going to inlay this with resin. But if you were painting that, you wouldn't need a lot of sanding down to do. Now, the end milling bit was taking this out like cutting through butter. Seriously. Some wood you'll find are better than others. Remember, this is just recycled pine off an old wardrobe. But the little end milling bit, it would definitely done its job. And I'm really pleased. And I would be quite happy to continue with that little bit. And you'd have this off in another 10 minutes, no problem. However, we have mentioned the straight flush bits. Now, these are a little bit more aggressive. So I certainly won't go anywhere near any fragile bits. You can just see up the top there. Just about to see the air whisker things, airline bits, whatever they are. You come near that with one of those and it's going to pop that straight off. So that's why we do the surrounding area. So we made it nice and secure. And this bad boy isn't going to get nowhere near that and destroy your work there. So we'll pop one on because we have shown you. But like I've just said, I would be quite happy to do this with the end milling bit. Right, we'll just pick one of these metric straight flush bits. Double blade on this one. Pop it in the router. It's got a quarter inch shaft on, so no need for the adapter. We'll set it to that distance here. Remember the depth, should I say? Three millimeters or so. And literally clear out either side of this uh, piece. Well, you can see from that, those straight flush bits certainly make a lot of dust. But they do the job. But uh, like I say, be prepared to get covered in plenty of this stuff. But it served its purpose and it got it out a lot quicker. Like I said previously, I've been quite happy to use the end milling bits for everything. Now I just want to do a general tidying up. Bit of sandpaper just to round these edges off. I don't want too sharp. And we'll go down these side bits, get all this out. And I also use a little engraving bits. One of these little cheap eBay specials again. I'll get one with a nice flat bottom. We'll pop it into a flexi cable, like so. And that simply attaches to the end of your Dremel or rotary tool. And we'll go around, just get inside all those tight areas, and give it a general tidy up. A bit of sanding down and then we'll be on to the next stage we'll do that next right that's enough general tidying up for me We've rounded those edges off slightly, so we've took that sharp lip off. And the same with all the framework. We didn't need to focus too much on the background, even though it, it is fairly smooth. Because remember, we are going to coat it all with resin. And we've rounded off the flower the same. Now for those that have watched my previous videos, you more or less know what's coming next. And that's good old boiled linseed oil. I like to put this on just to darken the wood slightly. Make that grain pop out a little bit more. It's not so much for protection as it is an indoor piece. We will basically do all the face and the shirt 
and all the framework. We'll leave the little flower for now because we're going to use some painter's touch red, give that a nice red flower. And while we're on it, we might as well grab something else, a bit of wood dye, whatever we've got kicking about in the shed, and we'll do the stem with that. So I'll do all those three items onto this little piece, and then we'll be on to the next stage. And here's your boiled linseed oil, and it's just a case of brushing it on, like so, and hopefully that will darken that wood down. You can see there, you don't need too much on it, just enough so it soaks in. Get down those side bits, doesn't matter what we put on the end back of there, because the resin will cover most of that. Excuse me, like so. So we'll give it a nice good coating, and the same with the framework. Not forgetting to do the side bits, and that will come out a lot nicer. Okay, I'll continue with this, and then we'll paint the rose, and then we'll come on to the next section. Right, everything's nicely dry, the boiled linseed oil, the wood dye for the little stem, and paint is touch paint for the red. Now we don't have to be too particular about any overflow, as long as we've got the side bits done. Remember, we're going to pour our black resin into this, and it'll go right up to the edge of that, and hopefully make that nice and crispy. So the next stage for me is to spray this with some varnish. I have no preference. I'm going to be polyurethane today, just about to see that. It could be gloss varnish, yacht varnish, crystal clear varnish. It's all the same to me. Makes no difference. A couple of reasons why. First one is just put a little bit of a shine on the wood as if you made the effort to finish it properly. And the other one is to seal this wood. If you imagine where you've routed that out, this was like straws. And basically we've cut, cut into the straws. You've left the pores open as I'm going to call it. And when you put your paint in there or your resin, Sometimes it can bleed into the side walls of your project. Well, we want it nice and crisp. So if there is sanding sealers out there, wood sealers, you could brush on first. Some people like to put a bit of clear resin in first. I just want to spray on some varnish. And I've certainly had no issues. So we spray the full piece, making sure we're getting to all these sections here. And that way, it'll be nicely sealed. So when we put our black resin in, we shouldn't have any issues. Also... They say it's because it's sealed, there's less chances of bubbles coming up through the resin as we put it in. So, three or four coats of this. You can see it's going slightly darker again, which is fine. And get inside all those cracks, rotate it round, spin it round, that flower will come up nice. And that's it. We'll do another two or three coats of that once it's dried on nicely. Then when we come back next time, we'll be ready to put our resin in. Right, we're ready for resin now. You can more or less just see the shine on there. We'll see it better when we go outside once the project's complete. So that varnish is enough to hopefully seal all the side walls, remember? And it's get a nice shine. So this wood hopefully is now ready for filling with resin. Now the resin for me today on this one, and I've used four or five different resins with no issues. But today, we'll be Vista 1, all resins are two parts, you get A, your resin, and B, your Ardner. This is a mix by volume, some resins are all mixed by weight, and it's a one-to-one -one mix, so basically whatever we use of A, the resin, we need exactly the same amount of B, the Ardner. Now I like to use these cheap party cups, they're ideal because they have little grooves on the side, so I tend to go up four, five, six, whatever we need, and just mark it off with a little marker like so. I've actually gone up six today, and that will be A for the resin, and obviously we've done exactly the same for B, the Adner. And then just a simple case of popping B into A. They do say put two separate ones into a third container. Personally, I'll just mix B with A, because B is a easy flowing one. And you mix the two together, Three or four minutes, put your gloves on, get a proper resin mask and have plenty of ventilation and then you'll be good to go. Some people do have reactions to the resin, breathing it in and contact with the skin. 
Now for colours, you get dyes, inks, powders. I've got them all here. Personally for me, I just like good old cheap acrylic paint. We're just going to go for the one colour today, which is black. So we're going to mix a bit of black acrylic in with our resin and basically just cover this back piece inside the eyes, nose, mouth and everything completely. And hopefully we'll have the effect afterwards. So I'll mix the A and B together. Mix in just cheap party cup uh, knife and fork, should I say. Just plastic ones like this. Spoon forks, it doesn't matter. These are ideal because they do have a little lip that runs along the back of them. So when you've done steering, you can also scoop it out and we can get into those harder to reach areas. And also we get a little cocktail stick to help it feed it round if we can't get in with this plastic one. Once it's all done, get a little lighter, either or, and then just skim over the top. That just helps release any air bubbles. Okay, I'll mix this off camera and then come back when we pop our acrylic paint in and then we can start filling this one in. Right, we've mixed our resin up nicely. I'd rather mix smaller amounts than mixing a full beaker full and having wasted. But looking at the size of this, we'll definitely need to mix another small batch, but that's certainly no issue. Now, like I said, acrylic paint, you don't need a lot. You can always add a little bit more than putting too much in and spoiling the actual acrylic. So we've just put our little blob in there like so. Give it a good mixing round. You've got a good half an hour or so to play with this, depending on what the temperature's like on the day of your mixing. So there's no need to panic. What I'll do, I'll start filling this in and just show you bits as we go along, because it's the same nice steady process. So we're not far off at that for our first little attempt. So just a simple case of filling it in. And we'll help it along, remember, little cocktail stick like so. Just to get into these tighter areas here. And then we can also use the back of the plastic fork to help feed it in like so. So we'll dab a little bit in there like that. It will move slowly, but if you're not too sure, just help it along its way like so. Okay, we get the general idea from that. I'm just going to add a little bit more black to this because. That's just not quite black enough for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more and then we can start filling this one in. Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around with that resin. Now I've only just put enough in, just to say cover the wood. You can overfill these if you wanted to, then sand them flush, then do a clear coat over the top. I want this one to set, so you can still feel the routed out image of the wood. So you can see from that, hopefully, it's nice and black. Everything's just done nicely. Two separate little mixes there, so... That was enough of what we wanted. So now it's just a simple case of going over, remember, with your little lighter. Just get rid of those air bubbles or bring on the big guns and just skim over like that. And you actually see all those bubbles disappearing. No problem whatsoever. And that's it. We'll leave this now for a good 24 hours, 48 hours. Get a nice cover and cover it up. I've already picked up one little ear already, so, and ears, dust, flies, they will find this resin. So, a nice canopy over the top. We'll come back in 48 hours 
and hopefully this little project will be finished right that's it this little project is finished now i've left it a good 24 hours personally another two or three days won't do it any hour whatsoever some resins they reckon can take up to 30 days to cure i've seen some resin which says 7 to 14 days so do your research and stuff but for 24 hours you can see from that that's all nicely solid downside to the resin is you do get a lovely reflection off it so just bear that in mind now the only issue i did have there's one little spot here if i'm going to be major picky if i just sit just say look just cut it in that red section here that's a painted on the ceiling of my shed that and the other thing that caught me out and it's the first time and i've done plenty of these resin infills if you remember those two nasty knots we had there they've actually leaked through and the resin's come out the other side so remember seal that with some kind of glue or put some tape over and there's the other one there so that's actually leaked right through lucky for me i had it on a bit of bit of scrap plywood and that's it this little project is finished i'll hang a simple hook on the back or route out a slit for hanging purposes so there we have him marlon brando from the movie the godfather imagine in it 14 inches by 18 inches we used our cnc bits to do all our lines and then we use the end milling bits for all the clear out on the small areas i personally would have done the full piece with that definitely made less mess than it did when we put these straight flush bits on they got it out a lot quicker but a bit more aggressive so just be a bit careful and that's it so marlon brando routed out on recycled pine inlaid with a resin mixed with black acrylic paint and a little bit of red painters touch for the rose thank you very much for watching